Good morning, Florida. Good morning, Florida. Hi, guys. Guys. How's it going? Ooh, this East Coast waking up stuff is... Uh... I know, I did, I did wake up. We, I went to bed early, but I woke up at like 4.45, 4 That's right. Vancouver time? No. Oh. Which was the time you'd be going to bed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, hear, I hear Johnny Hansen was running around shirtless. Yeah. What are you talking about? I was with you. No, you were, you were shirtless. I mean, I was. <laughs> but they don't know that. I hear, so I was with Ackles when he found out, and I was like, yeah, if I had a 45 pack, I probably, I probably wouldn't own shirts. Much less wear them ever. Uh, who got to witness that? <laughs> who heard about it and then beeline straight there? <laughs> uh, yeah. For sure. All for the cause. Yeah. Thanks for the album. Thanks for the album. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. Anything we can do. To we have your massive thing to show it off. <laughs> it's been a year to make it. Just to get that album put together. So that Matt would take his shirt off. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you indeed. Yeah. Thank you indeed. It was like one of those slow play pranks that like Clooney's famous for. It's like you you wrote an album, take it. Yeah, and it took a year. And he took his shirt off. <laughs> Mission accomplished. You can throw the rest of those albums in the trash. We don't need them anymore. We're good. Uh, it's good to see you guys again. Oh, yeah. Sorry that I missed you in DC. We love you. We love you. Yeah, I love you back. Thank you. Um, yeah, shit happens. Thank you. It's warm up here. Sorry. You should take your, you should take your jacket off. cleaning my trailer, which is kind of sad, uh, bittersweet, but I was like, well, you know, we're halfway through the season, I'm gonna start cleaning my trailer this past week, and I came across this shirt, and I was like, I have to. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was a shirt that a, uh, a fan had given me for Genevieve, so it's a medium. So, so I put it on this morning, and Jensen goes, did you roll your sleeves up? Well, that's the most impressive, is that it took him all weekend to sew his sleeves into that position. Just sitting there, like, I'll be right there. Right. Yeah, Cliff's like, hey, that shirt's bigger than the one you normally wear. It actually covers your torso. Do you need help? Look, I do. I'm not, it's, it's been a while. You just unwrote so much yes. fanfic. All right. All right, all right, all right. More shenanigans. Yes, always. Good to see you well, You raised your hand and now you're like, oh, I don't. I was. It was a smell test. I was just. I didn't. I just wanted to know if. Um, Dean and Cass will ever have the profound bonding. I'm going to need to hear the rest of the question, folks. You mean on camera? The profound bonding? 
bonding that they had prior to their domestic dispute? Will they ever influence each other? Uh, and what's your safe word? The, uh, yeah, the, the characters w work out the rift between them. They, they, there's, a, there's a scene actually coming up, I think I mentioned this, uh, it might have been at DC, but um, there's a scene that, that comes up uh, in the next... Is it? Uh, yeah, in episode nine. Where, where Dean, Dean kind of explains his position of why he's uh, has had so much trouble with with that relationship. So, hopefully that will shed some light. And mend some, you know, bruised egos. There will be profound bondage then. Uh, you know, see, bondage and bonding. And bondo are three different things. That was Misha's. That was Misha's. Oh. Bondo? See, I was a profound bondo, and there's a scene with profound bondo, and that's just fixing up baby. So, <laughs> Misha, fixing up Misha's back, just spasming some Bondo. He did say a safe word, wasn't he, He's not holding together too well. So... Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, let's, uh, let's go... Right there, yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm a high school teacher, and I wanted to ask you, um, Mostly for my students, the number of supernatural fans that I have as students is incredible. Um, what were your, what was your favorite class in high school? What was your best class in high school? And what was the one class in high school you wish you had paid more attention to? Ooh. I, I, I pretty much was answering that as you were asking. So, uh, favorite was, um, uh, would have been math. I would just, because it was something that I was good at, and it was easy, all, you know, the answers, you, you do the problem, the answer's right there. Um, the one I had the most difficulty in, wasn't that with the first one? Your, fa your favorite? Favorite. Your best, which I guess would be the map, and, and okay. then the one that you'd spent most of, you wish you'd well, spent okay. more Well, uh, okay, so, so let, me, let me go back. So my, my favorite, I would say, would have been uh, English, because it was, she was one of my favorite teachers of all time. Although it was the most difficult subject that I had. I, I had the, the worst grades, but it was my favorite teacher, so I enjoyed that. The best was uh, uh, math, because I, I always had my highest grades in math. And the one I wish I paid more attention to was history. Because yeah. 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 Uh, I, I, love, I love history now, but then I was just like, who cares? And it's history is fascinating, I, I think. And so, are you a history teacher? There you go. <laughs> well, you tell all your students that, uh, that, that that's the one subject I wish I'd paid more attention to. Yeah, I loved I loved history. Funny enough, I was thinking my favorite um, might have been I had some great English teachers and history teachers. Um, I don't know if I can decide between the two of them. My best class was math. Um, the one I wish I paid more attention to was um, Spanish. Yeah, I sort of did enough to get by, but I wish I paid attention and I wish I was more fluent. I didn't realize I'd have the chance to travel so much um, as part of my job, uh, so now I wish I could communicate better in, in foreign lands. My worst one was biology. Is anybody a any biology teacher? Are you really? Yeah, for some reason. I was good at chemistry because it was almost mathematics and physics. But biology just got me for some reason. Good for you. I mean, that, that sounded like, good for you. But I meant it like, good for you, that's impressive. Yeah. Not worthy. Uh, I'm gonna go way over this side, right here. Right in the center, yeah. So, uh, my question for you is, what kind of skills have you learned being on the set that you didn't know? Sorry. My question for you is, what kind of skills have you learned being Sam and Dean, like, cracking computers and yeah, breaking I, into I, things? I have not, I realize that I, I don't know how to pickpocket out of handcuffs. <laughs> so it's kind of turning around. Is that what you were saying? Well, I wanted to know what you learned, not what you couldn't do. <laughs> like kicking in doors and things like that. Kids can kick in doors. Got that one down. Uh, uh, I don't know. 
feel like I've, I've, I feel like there's several things that I've I've either brushed up on, uh, honed, or learned from playing this character. Um, sure, how to properly kick in a door. That one, that one, I, I got that one down. Um, there was uh, uh, actually picking a lock. Um, I, it would take me an hour to do it compared to the 2.5 seconds that it takes Dean to do it. But I have worked, there's, there's locking mechanisms that you can get online. One of our uh, crew members had one that's, it's a clear mechanism so you can see the workings inside and you can actually practice. And I, I played with that for like a whole day and was like, oh, got it. <laughs> But it's frustrating because it takes a long time, which is when the door kicking thing comes into play. <laughs> it just hits much faster. And more gratifying, too. Um, uh, knife throwing. Ooh, that's um, uh, for all the times you need to For all the times you need to throw knives. Um, Computer hacking. And taking a punch. Uh, stunt driving, um, weapons handling. Um, and I'm going to say something and it's going to be a little bit of a spoiler alert, but, uh, dancing. <laughs> there were several people that went... <laughs> Is it dancing? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, wait for that one. I, I don't know if I've learned anything practical. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe dad voice or something. I'm to play different versions of Sam. I'm able to kind of pop into dad mode. Um, yeah, the other day Odette was um, singing herself to sleep and self-soothing, and it was um, uh, she was singing these lyrics: "You have blood on your face, you big disgrace." <laughs> and she kept doing it. It was really yeah. She's a bad all right. Blood on your face, you big disgrace. And she was like, Mom, Mom, play, play, uh, play you big disgrace on your phone. And it was like, you know, 9.30 p.m. and she had been up late. She had friends over. Um, and Jen's like, Odette, it's time to go to sleep, baby girl. And then there's a little pause and Odette just goes, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Which was amazing. <laughs> Dot, it's time to sleep. Um, so trying to hide my, uh, my joy. Odette trying to get under mama's skin. Uh, other than that, I don't, I don't know what I've learned. I don't know. That's a good question. I'll think about that. Moi? Moi. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. I uh, asked uh, Jeffrey Dean uh, Morgan this when I met him, but if they did a crossover episode with you two on The Walking Dead and Negan over uh, Supernatural, who survives longer? Uh, that's a good question. I, I can run faster than the zombies can pissed. So, yeah, when I'm scared, I'm pretty fast. So I, th I think I do pretty well. I'm, I'm good at hiding, to go back to the prior question. Stand in the corner. I think it's an easy question. I think Sam Dean would last much longer because... <laughs> hear me out. Because they deal with a variety of enemies and have knowledge of how to handle just about anything. Whereas Negan, how's he? Why gonna, does it smell like sulfur? How's he gonna handle? Yeah, how is he gonna handle a demon? How's he gonna handle a, a, a werewolf? Uh, I don't know that the bat's gonna be much help. Um, so I, I feel like I feel like Sam and Dean might have a little bit of an edge going into any kind of world, uh, and uh, but that's just the nature of our show. So there you go. Are they bringing a microphone? Sure. <laughs> I've got one. <laughs> First off, why isn't it Sam Steele? <laughs> Sam Steele? Sam Steele. They were talking about yeah. the bonding. <laughs> Sam has better taste. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Dean has no taste, clearly. <laughs> how, how much fun are you having Visiting all the evil Sam and the other worlds, and that Matrix opening the one you directed was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And how much fun is it to revisit all these old versions that you've played of yourself? Well, you couldn't fit in. You couldn't fit in the white suit, could you? 
too big. It's too big. Yeah. yeah. I was uh, I was working out, out a lot ten years ago. You were really overweight ten years I wasn't, ago. That's I, wasn't, why. I wasn't running marathons, so I was a little heavier. Um, a lot of fun. It's kind of bittersweet, you know, because it's it's. We sort of know what's going on and what's going to happen, and we we, uh, we start episode eleven a week from tomorrow. Um, no, episode twelve. Jesus, we're already um, Chuck. Uh, we're already uh, eleven episodes done. So it's bittersweet, you know. We're we're over the hump and uh, trying to take this show and these characters home. It's fun to revisit, and I, it's kind of it feels like an homage to y'all guys as well um, to be able to go out. And, uh, I haven't learned how to deal with the microphone. Why we can't have nice things. Yeah, it's a, it's a good time. I, I think it's... It's a testament to, to this family at large and to the show and what the show means that we get to go do something and play a character we played 11 years ago or 12 years ago or, or more. Man, you get to do some fun stuff. Has that ever done? What? Nothing. I didn't... What, what was the question? The old prior versions of yourself. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm not playing prior versions of myself. I'm just... You did. I mean, ish. <laughs> For half a second. Uh, yeah, it's... There, there is... Um, I think this season, they're kind of... They're kind of pulling out all the hits. They're, they're, it's, uh, it's a bit of the Greatest Hits uh, album, and... Uh, and and with some new some new ideas too, like I mentioned earlier, um, and it it is it is fun to it's always fun to kind of break down those those uh, character walls and 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 do something different or take yourself out of the uh, kind of the comfort zone that you're in. Um, and I feel like we're doing that a lot this season, and I feel like it's it's uh, it's fun, but it's weighted mm -hmm. because it does feel like. The writers are getting in as much as they can before it's done, yeah. Yeah. and it's even though it's fun, it's kind of sad at the same time. Um, but you know, you don't want to do that. And I was totally kidding about Sam Steele. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hi guys. Hey. <laughs> um, watching the opening scene of Profit and Loss, where you're in, where Dean is in box at the bottom of the ocean mm -hmm. that just hit me to the core. I couldn't breathe while watching that. Do you guys ever get in a situation like in small spaces or anything where you're just like, okay, this is giving me the creeps and I can't do this? Well, that was last year, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, um, I mean, that scene in particular was, uh, it, it's, there, it was a, a, a few things. It was obviously being in a very, very tight spot. And what had happened was that when they lower that lid, there was just a small space that was cut out of one side of the box for the camera to see. But all of behind the camera was all blacked out because they didn't want to have any light breaching into the box. So the only light source was the phone. <clears throat> and so from my perspective, I was in a box and it was pitch black. And, and then trying to go there mentally of what would this be like and thinking, you know, crying for help. You, you're essentially telling yourself that, they're, that it's real. As opposed to most people do, if they get confined into a spot like that, they try to tell themselves that it's fine, everything's fine, I'm gonna get right out of here. And you try to soothe yourself. I'm doing the complete opposite. Um, and it was, you know, it was one of those, there, there's, there's scenes that, that pop up every now and again where you kind of have to walk off when they're over because your body's shaking or you're emotional or, or it, you know, it was a close call or whatever it is. And that was one of those that I kind of had to take a moment and, and bring myself back to reality that it's just fake, this isn't real, calm down. I did it after the scene. I did, yeah, I did it after the scene. Yeah, no, during the scene, it was very real to me. I think the most uncomfortable I've ever been it wasn't even really the bee at the Buzz episode with the bees, though that was disconcerting. Um, it was the one, I think it was called Heaven and Hell, where it's Alistair and Sam and Dean jump through the, the stained glass window. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, they would stand us up and show us the pads, 
and then they put the stained glass window in so you couldn't see, and it was, you know, you know they're not going to play a prank on you and not have the pads there. <laughs> but you're still like, I'm jumping through something that's, it's not exactly opaque, it lets light in, but it's very translucent, you can't see in what's on the opposite side, so, and they're sort of, uh, there were um, crossbars that were foam and painted to look like wood, but still they're more firm, so they provide structure. And so that was a bit, <clears throat> all right, there we go. <laughs> And you reach, we were high enough to reach the free fall point, you know, because we propelled ourselves and then after, what, eight or nine feet, you're just falling straight down and that weightless sensation. Um, that was probably the, the least comfortable I <laughs> The beginning of, beginning of season four, when uh, Dean climbs out of hell. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, uh, that actual shot of me coming out of the earth, that was, that was not on a sound stage, that was actual, they, they had dug, they had dug a big hole in a field and built like this little tiny wooden box under the ground with a, an entrance to it that was a, a little, like maybe like five feet back. So the, the hatch would open, I'd climb down underneath, they would close the hatch, cover it back up with sod, tamp it all down, and keep in mind this was, you know, July, oh my and it's, it's 80 degrees in Vancouver in July, and in a box with no ventilation whatsoever that's completely dark, and uh, it was probably like 120 degrees in there. So I'm just sitting there, just starting to like sweat for two reasons. One, it's hot. For three reasons, I'm underground in a box, and no one can hear me. Um, and I'm having to wait for the crew and everybody to run away because it's a big giant crane shot. So they're going to see, you know, for quite a, quite a distance. So everybody's got a clear back. So I'm just sitting there waiting until I hear over the, this, you know, big bullhorn, Kim Manners yell action. And I just remember going like, what have I done in my life that has let me this place? Who's like this Who did I anger? Um, that was uncomfortable. I didn't like that. And then now I'm all sweaty and I literally have to crawl through about this much of actual dirt and sod. Because it was what they cut a hole, you know, about that big and laid neoprene, like overlapped it so that it was like I had to like get myself through it and then get through all the dirt and the weeds and stuff that they packed on it. So it was just clinging to my face and everything. It was, yeah, I was not happy about that. <laughs> Uh, right, looks like a rainbow shirt. Yeah. Yes. Uh, nobody behind has a rainbow the, shirt yes, on. Behind the blue beanie, all I can see is kind of a rainbow, and I saw jazz fingers. It's <laughs> one hand, though. It's supposed to be two. Right? It's the balloons from up with the house. It's a jazz. Yeah, it's a balloon shirt, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I see this much of it, but I noticed that the, the sleeves aren't uh, sewn up. So you <laughs> So first off, I used to live in Boston, and I saw you run the marathon, and even though you were literally running a marathon, you stopped to say hi and take pictures and thank us for waiting in the rain, and you were literally running a marathon, so thank you, um, and congratulations. Any excuse to stop while you're running a marathon, I think, is the key here. <laughs> yeah, I would walk up to people who had no idea, be like, thanks for coming. <laughs> It means a lot that you're here. He takes off, they're like, who the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so my question is, so why am I wearing the dress? I work at Disney World now that I graduated. Um, I'm basically like a cliff, but for Mickey Mouse. I'm, the handler. I'm like an attendant and a handler. All right. Um, so <laughs> you're my... the Mickey Mouse handler. Yeah, basically. Um, get out of here. <laughs> Um, so my question is, either from your childhood or from your kids' childhood, do you have a favorite memory of going to Disney World or Disneyland? And if you haven't been, do you have just a favorite memory of watching a movie, wearing, playing dress up, anything like that? Yeah, I, I do. I went to Disney World, I think, with my, uh, with my family and my mom's parents. Uh, I think I was around, I think I was around 10 years old. And so this was, you know, let's say 1990 before cell phones and pagers and all that. And right when we got into, I think it was either Epcot or Disney World, I got separated, my brother and I were with 
our grandfather, and I think I went to the bathroom or something, I probably got distracted and went to a video game or whatever it was, <laughs> couldn't locate them. And so I looked for, I don't know how long, five, ten minutes, and couldn't find them. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to walk around and just kind of... <laughs> and it was middle, uh, middle of the summer, packed, packed. I ended up getting on the monorail. And like, it was like maybe ten. And I didn't really know. I, I left that park on the monorail and went to MJ, whatever it was. And, yeah, you know, and so they couldn't find me. And I guess they were making, I guess they were making announcements. You know, Jared had a lucky... Papa came, but whatever. Your grandfather's waiting, but I was no longer in that park. And they didn't have that park and I elsewhere. It's um, <laughs> a funny, it's a funny uh, what happened afterwards. Um, so, long story short, it's now the end of the day. You watch the fireworks or whatever, and I was like, well, I guess I'm gonna leave. And so I, I, I go back to the park we were at and start walking out. And my grandfather is just sitting on the bench right by the exit. He had just been waiting there all day. Aww. Yeah, yeah. So then when, because we were there for like three or four days, so we went to the next park the next day, I had the little, uh, <laughs> like, put on the <laughs> That wasn't my idea. <laughs> I'd walk and like, oh, that, no, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I still use that with him on sets of that. True story, true story. Uh, yeah, that's my most memorable experience. I went, to, uh, I went to Disney World once or twice as a kid, and you know, nothing, nothing crazy experience like that. Like it was just a good solid family vacation. Um, when I was a little bit older um, and working on uh, uh, a show called Days of Our Lives. Uh, I, my, my family was like, we're going to go to Disney World and we want you to, to fly over and meet us because they're living in Texas, I was in California. So I said, okay. So, um, uh, Deidre Hall, who played Marlena, uh, was my mom on the show. Um, she came to me and she says, I understand you're going to Disney World. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going. It's a little family vacation. And, you know, we, we were on a budget and we were staying at, uh, you know, a, a, a budget hotel and, and we, we, my dad had found tickets and so we were, um, uh, we were just gonna go normally like most people would go. And she goes, not my son. <laughs> so Deidre Hall calls her contact at Disney World and the next thing I know, they have put us in the, like the presidential suite of this, of wow. one, of the, one of the hotels. And they, uh, probably the Floridian, yeah. And they have a parade for me. I'm like year one on this show, and I'm like 19 years old, and and I'm in the back of this like convertible going through one of the parts of Disney World. My brother and my sister are in the car with me, and I'm sitting up on the top like. And my name is like written across the, the side of the car. It's like Jensen Ackles from Days of Our Lives. And we're cruising through, and nobody was like, there he is. And everybody was like, who the hell? You should have you pulled a Roddy Carrington. And <laughs> ask, ask for a wrench. Oh, yeah, just, just, hold, just hold a wrench. Just and, here to fix some stuff. Yeah, just gonna fix, here to, yeah but you can't do that when you're in a parade and you're the only one that's sitting up doing this. And uh, I just remember going like, wow, this, this is really embarrassing. <laughs> but equally awesome. <laughs> because we got like the, you know, the royal treatment and, and, uh, and that was the last time I ever went to Disney World. Because <laughs> I was like, well, doesn't get any better than that. I'm out. Uh, so that was pretty great. Um, are you pulling us or do we have time for one quick one? One quick one. One, I just... I just oh, okay, all right. Quick one, yes, go. Oh my gosh. Um, what are you guys drinking in your Starbucks cups? What are we drinking in our coffee here? Yeah. This is a uh, black Americano, this is which is espresso and water, no, for those not, who don't know. That's not fun. That's not fun? <laughs> Would you prefer pumpkin spice latte? Yeah. Some lavender creme brulee crap. Yeah. Well, you can keep that. I'm gonna drink black coffee. Can't, can't do that after Halloween. Mom yeah. is a doctor. Fine, there's a little whiskey in it too, okay? Is that what you wanted? Is that what you wanted? 
Just a, just a little, just enough to get me through breakfast. My, mine's a Diet Dr. Pepper. Let's hear it for Diet Dr. Pepper. See, back when he played Lucifer for the first time, he was drinking regular Dr. Pepper. Yes, yes. But now that he runs marathons, deal it. All right, guys, thanks. We'll see you on the